Welcome to a new season of Two Whatever's Way Up. I am one of your hosts, Seth. I have the professional cynic with me here, Jesse. Jesse, how you feeling, buddy? Uh, I'm a little sick. I'm getting over a cold, but I'm here. I'm good. The muscle man muscles through. We also have our other host, the horror horror. Hope is here with us. How are you feeling, my dear? I am post-op. I am back. All my insides are gone. Yay. So No more thank- guts, just pipe letting. <laughs> So thank you, everyone, who helped me out with my surgery, pre, post, and during, whatever. Um, I'm back. I have new equipment. Well, I got rid of my internal equipment, and I got new external equipment. How did I know this is where the joke was going to go? How did I know? So, uh, (laughs) because it's me. I'm your horror whore. Right. Um, So real quick, funny story before we get into this. Um, Absolutely. I obviously everyone knows I work in a lab and I really wanted my insides back. I was like, yes, I knew they have to go through pathology, but Oh Jesus um, Christ. I, I was like, I know they have to go through pathology, but like, you know, they don't use the entirety of the organs when they run pathology. They just they slice it up, they take what they need and test it. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can get my stuff back. So the last day I was at work. Uh, before I was off f- for a while, uh, I grabbed a sterile container and I filled it with formalin at work. And I had my coworker decorate it and I put like my name and stuff on it. And when I showed up to the hospital for my surgery, I was like, I have this. Can you put my stuff in it? It's formalin. It has like the labels and stuff. I was like, it's, it's formalin. I just want my stuff. I know you have to send it to pathology, but can I have my stuff? And like the nurse, like three nurses and the doctor all stopped and they're like, no one has ever asked us this. What the fuck? (laughs) This is the most G rated (laughs) R rated story I've ever listened to in my life. I don't know how you're throwing this needle, but I think I can post this to TikTok. (laughs) And and they were just like, "I, I don't know if we can. I was like, I mean, it's formal and it's tested. I put the labels on. It has the biohazard. I have it. I, it's it's all legit. Just put it in the, the cup, please. And they're like, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> and sadly, I have no organs at home with me. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, like, do you know anything about, like, a, a layman, someone that does not work in a lab and have access to that kind of stuff? <laughs> What is that process for them? Because I've always wanted to keep my leg if I ever had to get it amputated. Uh, Actually, we do get a fuck ton of legs at work all the time. I'm the only one who actually handles them because I'm the only one who wants to touch them. (laughs) Um, Understood. Makes sense. Typically speaking, when they send the leg, again, we're not going to gross and dissect the whole. Gross means like to cut up and whatnot. Um, Oh. Cause like the the place where we do like the cutting up is called the gross room, the grossing area. Interesting. Um, so I didn't know gross was a professional term. Yeah, the gro- uh, grossing technician, like level one, level two, whatever. That's like a thing. Um, and so people will send legs. We'll get it in a, like a giant um, biohazard um, receptacle. And then it's in a biohazard bag inside the receptacle and then we'll get it. But we don't like cut up the whole thing. Um, I do know some places more so like mom and pop labs. They'll, they'll give you, they could like give you bones back or like organs back, but like something like a leg is hard to get back because of all the flesh and the tissue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, even when we have it in our leg fridge, it's still necro- it, even at the colder temperature, it still rots and necrots. Ew. So, um, but we have to keep them for up to thirty days. Uh, no, not thirty days. It was up to sixty days before we can dispose of it properly because we have to keep it in just in case there's more testing. Uh, we have to do that for all of our specimens, uh, but more so because we can't like stick it in a giant formalin container like we could like smaller objects because okay, the, for- okay. the formalin is a preservative um so it i didn't realize uh season three would be me explaining this what a way to uh, start. <laughs> <laughs> my 
push it into it hard. <laughs> but yeah, and that's just like the basics. And I'm not going to go into the whole shebang. <laughs> but sure, you know no, what no, you no. should. You know what you should have done. You should have asked for the all your stuff back and then cast them in resin and turned it into a coffee table. There you go. I wanted no. I was legit. My friend does resin professionally, and I was legit gonna like get my stuff and make like a resin sculpture. But again, I they didn't give it back to me. So damn. I guess we'll have to go rob somebody else for their bits. (laughs) I know. I was like, it's mine. Damn it. But whatever. Well, opening on body autonomy, let's do a little housekeeping (laughs) before we jump into our episode proper. What have you guys been watching lately? I'm so curious. We've been we've been off for uh, a month and a half. Uh, No, no clips, no episodes. People have missed us. What have we been filling our time with here? What have I been watching? (laughs) Uh, Oh, Reacher season two. I finished Reacher season two. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was all right. I didn't like it as much as the first season. You can tell that it's they had to make a lot of cuts or changes to the book because the Mm -hmm. first season, based on the killing floor, um, they had to add stuff because the book is so like bare bones and so short. So they had to add a lot of stuff to get it up to eight episodes. Whereas with the season two, they had to cut stuff to get it down to eight episodes. So you Mm -hmm. can kind of see there's a lot of conceits. There's a lot of it's also not the best writing. There's some bad dialogue there's some it's like well that's a wild coincidence you know so you get you get one or two get out of jail free cards in yeah. every story a few coincidences but they really rely on a lot of happenstance in the second season um yeah, I mean, yeah there is one moment in season two. batman there's nothing he can't do right <laughs> yeah he's kind of like an he's kind of like the perfect soldier all through se- the second season he doesn't make any mistakes like he does in the first season yeah but yeah. uh there is there's one moment towards the end of the second season where he's like walks into the front gate and there's that music that's playing and i was like all right all right this is pretty cool yeah yeah you know what song i'm talking about so oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, it, there's it's it's good. It's not great. Um, the third season's already been they're already shooting it actually. Uh, season yeah. three, based based on the book Persuader, which is widely considered the worst book. Oh no, jeez. Um, oh, well, it I, I'm in the middle of reading it. It's not bad. It's just there is a lot of like you got to stretch before you reach that far. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. It okay. basically right, an, right. Agent, an, an agent is trying to infiltrate a drug trafficking ring uh, in a in a a, a a crime family that's in Maine. And the agent goes missing and they end up crossing paths with Reacher. And so they're like, well, look, this is all off the books. We can't really go to our superiors because we did this illegally. Uh, mm. So would you go break in for us and find our agent for us? So they send him undercover and, and uh, to try to break into this crime family and infiltrate. So basically for the whole story, he's trying to play the bad guy. I cannot wait for all the jokes in that season about him going undercover and it being impossible because he's the size of a baby. I was about to say, like, how is he going to go undercover? Oh, there's somebody else that's the the bodyguard of the family. He's even bigger than him. Oh, shit. Oh, God. They even say, like, he had he takes steroids and he's impotent and he likes to he likes to fuck with the husband's wife. Like, yeah, he's uh yeah, I, I imagine like uh, if Alan Richardson was trying to take on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh hell yeah, brother! Yes, yeah, okay. two like okay. slabs of meat slapping into each other. It's like yeah. All I can think Beautiful. is the best Fast and Furious when Vin Diesel and The Rock just <laughs> collide into each other. Yes. Oh god! Nothing but protein and testosterone slapping her. Oh, yeah. I'm ready for it! I'm ready for it. Jeez. How about you, Hope? What do you been, what have you been watching? Uh, I've actually just been like t- knocking stuff off my like wanted to watch movie list, uh, yeah. like old and new. Um, like just a couple of things I watched were um, this this new documentary on Max Chowchilla about the uh, mass kidnapping. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched it. I saw it pop up on HBO Max. Uh, yeah. What did you think of it? Uh, it was crazy. Uh, like the, there's not really like a twist at the end, but the twist at the end is like, okay. Whoa. Um, and then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I watched like Dick's the musical. <laughs> that trailer really good. had me very that, interested. That trailer popped up and I was like, what the fuck is this? Me, yeah. uh, so 
it's I wanted to see that because Megan the Stallion and Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of that. Well, Megan the Stallion has my heart because she's a total weeb. And um, like she's hosting the Country Roll Awards. Oh my god, that's awesome! I'm sure yeah. the nerds are going absolutely insane over that. Oh yeah, ape shit, ape shit. Um, you know, and just like, um, and then of course I saw a couple like indie movies like Flora and Son and Landscape with Invisible Hand. Um, so yeah, I've just been like knocking off movies, the one Love by it. one, just like wanting to get my watch list down, even though it keeps. By the way. Can I just say real quick, shout out to Dice Art because every single time I think I found the most obscure fucking movie yeah. and I go and I'm like, oh, put it on my watch list. He's already put it on his watch list. I'm like, I was like, only three people know about this. How does he already have it on his watch list? His so- box <laughs> is like his absolute God-given proof of how much of a hipster he is. I've like that exact yeah. same thing has happened to me before where I'll go, damn, this movie looks really good. N- nobody on Letterbox has commented or added it except for Dice Art. Dice Art. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like there's literally like this uh, I found like a two minute Japanese indie film from like 70 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, same thing. It was like no one, no one, no one. Dice Art. I was like, how the fuck? <laughs> way this changed my life when i saw it at age 38 and like it's always like something deep i love it his letter i know it's ridiculous Mm. but yeah so i just been pleasure watching Mm. perfect oh excellent same it does bring up something else i wanted to address is that there's that chris nolan interview that just happened with uh stephen colbert and he apparently admits he loves the fast and furious movies Congratulations, Seth. You have some kinship now. That's right. Son of a bitch. That's right. God, I can't. I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Not for me. No, I I, I understood. No worries. Yeah. At least he admitted that Tenet doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> The By the man. way, this was supposed to be a film rescue episode today, but we were going to have Jack Packard back with us, and he had to bow out for family issues. Uh, so we'll push Tenet down the line to do that on film rescue to open to... Uh, probably like mid season, maybe the end of the season. But, yeah. Uh, whenever yeah. we yeah, can we, get him back. So yeah, we want, we want to have Jack back uh, to do uh film rescue for that because we all watched Tenet. We're all like, still don't get it. Well, and it, it'll be his first non DC uh, film. Rescue. Non-superhero, yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. done Marvel and DC. His, his first one was X-Men apocalypse. Yeah. That's so he's, right. this is his first non Cape film and you know, Love it. We don't have many Cape movies on Film Rescue this season, which I'm very happy with. Oh, no, I know. I'm so I think, happy. I think Beyond Superman Returns, everybody, uh, we had a couple requests for Cape movies, and I was like, we've covered them all. There's nothing we else can, to do. We it's can only say thing. so many times. Yeah, it's, it's all the same shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Should we Should we say that Film Rescue is going to be coming to an end this season? Should we say we'll, that? We'll, the... just, just, we'll wait. to. We'll, we'll discuss that later. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's wait to the opener of that. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spoilers on two whatevers for the people who people watch this for us. You know, like they they yeah. want to know what we're into right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we, we'll save that for film rescue. What about you, Seth? Tell us your updates in life. Absolutely. So um, I've been trying to catch up on series streaming anywhere that I can. Anything that's been short. So I caught uh, the Devil's Hour on Amazon. That okay. was um, what what. Uh, presents itself as a ghost story turns into a fucked up reincarnation story and it's kind of great okay um, peter capaldi plays the villain and <gasps> holy shit he's oh shit no he's, dude peter capaldi can bring it oh man and he's locked in a room for the whole thing like the whole thing he's locked in a room and you're okay. like is this the guy the villain and he's it's is awesome. it really is good. it free on Prime or did you have yeah, to rent it? Uh, Prime, yeah, it's a uh, Prime, what uh, original Prime original. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to put that on. I'll put it on my list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eight episodes. I th- they might squeeze a season two out of it. Honestly, I could end exactly where it ended. It was kind of, it was tight. I liked it. Um, nice. Also on Amazon, I started the Mr. and Mrs. Smith series with uh, Donald Glover and his. Uh, bow in that one it is you were asking us about that how yeah what 
like is it good is it like gotta be better than the movie i'm I'm gonna need i'm gonna need uh jesse to put a towel under himself where i describe this the opening of this series so okay. that mr and mrs smith opens on alexander skarsgård and isa gonzalez just making out in a sundress and then they start getting shot at and it's awesome dude like <sighs> That is like the opening sequence just promises you what the series is going to be, and then it switches to Donald Glover's character. Um, it's good. I'm only two episodes in. Devin's finished it, and he swears by it. So I'm I'm going to. Oh, it's okay. complete. It's, they're not doing episode by episode. No, no, they release the full season at once. Amazon's doing it the right oh. way. Oh, oh, okay. Because well, sometimes they'll do like episode by episode, like they did with Reacher, but then they'll do like a full season dump with this. It's that's strange. I, I th- so the way Amazon runs their sh- their stuff is they'll actually put the pilot on YouTube first, and then if the huh. if the YouTube pilot does well, they'll launch the full first season, and then the second season they switch to the weekly release. Because um, okay. their, their goal is to pull you in. in. Yeah, yeah. Get oh, you okay. in with that first season and then say, all right, now it's episodic. And I can kind of deal with that. That gives me the best of both worlds. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Gotcha. Fair enough. I'm, I saw I'm, that I saw that Paramount started doing that as well. And when the, they were dropping stuff for the second season of Halo, oh, yeah. they put the whole first season for free on YouTube. Like, dude, you're not going to convince anybody. <laughs> no. You, you're, literally nobody cares. But guys, nobody this season cares. has an ODST sequence in it. Oh, big! And he doesn't put his fucking helmet back on. Dude, they're getting kind of shitty about that too. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, God damn it! They're like, if you guys hate the helmet off, then you're not real fucking fans. And I was like, deuces. Have Bro, fun with your die. Watch, watch the Mandalorian. Fuck off. Right, right. Yeah. Pedro Pascal, the face, the man with the face in Hollywood right now, said, "Nah, I can do the helmet." Right. Well, come on, even dude, though- you get days off for the. For yeah. the three scenes he actually puts the helmet on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's what I've been watching. Um, today, though, we're, we're 20 minutes in. The time to shift yeah, into the movie? Yeah, let's see. Well, Yay. yeah, we had, we had to do a little update update, so I think we can finally jump in. Hell yeah. Well, today, we're talking about my man, Mr. Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. and we're talking about the last great adventure movie he will ever make, The Adventures yeah. of Tintin. Hey, did you guys really hate that uh, that Crystal Skull movie? Well, here's the apology. <laughs> right. I this like- is literally an apology. I pointed this out to Seth. I was like, this is the mo- movie that followed right after Crystal Skull. And he's like, hey, guys, seriously, I can still do it. I've still got it. I just can't do it with George sitting next to me. So, so here it is. Sorry. And I love that take. Oh yeah, great. I had never thought of it that way before. Because in, in my mind, this is such this is so insular, um, insular. But yeah, no, you're you're straight up correct. Like th- as as I was rewatching it last night, every single scene, I was like, "Damn, you could really just swap out with old Harrison Ford and a young kid, and this yeah. is this is just straight up an Indiana Jones movie by any other name." This is your short round adventure that you wanted. Exactly. Oh my God. How good would that have been? Um, So good. Yeah. So I wanted to bring this on the show. uh, A, to show that post 2010, Steven Spielberg can still bring it. And in things other than dramas, I want to be very clear. Man, his fans get real achy when you shit on him. The Fablemans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The post. Yes, guys. That was an excellent film. I promise. Um, Fablemans, Fablemans was fine. David Lynch played John Ford. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Where's the horizon? Um, yeah, I, I wanted to bring this one on, A, because I saw it in theaters, and that was the last time I had seen it, and so I wanted to be like 100% sure that this was excellent. And upon recent rewatch, I was like, God damn, this was a absolutely missed movie. Like, nobody talks yeah. about this. Yeah. It did well. It it financially it did pretty well against the budget of uh, one thirty five. Uh, it did made three seventy four. That's pretty decent return on investment. Not huge, but pretty good. You should look up what the international split is on this. You will never guess the split. What? So so normally an American film, uh, like seventy five to eighty percent of the budget will be made in America, and then the other. 
tw- you know, 20, maybe 25, maybe a little less, right. will be made what up was internationally. The for this one? This one was closer to 50-50. Really? Huh. Wow. Yeah. Um, wow. Reason being, Tintin is famous around the world. Like, it's well, I was, Superman, I was... Mickey Mouse, and then Tintin, basically. <laughs> was... It was a French comic, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it, it originated in Europe, so I, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so this was like the kind of stuff that Spielberg and Kennedy and Moffat and Edgar Wright would have like grown up reading. Um, right. So like the, the source material just kind of makes more sense overseas than it does in America. And our, the mm. American return was not a lot. It was not uh, super significant. Um, I was... Yeah, I was going to say, like, I know personally, I did not grow up reading the Tintin. Same. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I didn't. And it not it wasn't anything against it. It just wasn't my audience, I guess. I don't yeah. I don't know. Well, and like, kind of, a I guess the closest thing, thing we had in America was like, I don't know, the I mean, besides Indiana Jones, obviously, was like maybe the Hardy Boys. Yeah, like that, yeah, Hardy maybe. Boys definitely have a similar flavor to this. Well, like Nancy Drew or They're, like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, and I think another aspect of this was this, uh, the Tintin comic had the the like running comic issue where you're jumping in deep into his adventures. It's like Buckaroo Banzai where like, you're, you're just going to kind of run along with this if you're jumping in because you don't know any of these characters and they'll just yeah. refresh your memory every once in a while on different people. So it's like, this is just old school stuff, and and that's why it really appeals to Spielberg. And I think he's working some magic in making this kind of stuff that, like, all three of us are into comics, so it's not like yeah. we're avoiding this kind of comic stuff. But like, they made it more accessible, I think, to a to a more modern audience. Um, let's jump into it. What did you guys think? Had either of you seen this before we watch uh, watch for this? Never seen it. Yeah, I'd never seen it either. Oh boy. Okay. Um, Jesse, let's start with you. What uh, initial thoughts? I know you uh, normally you're not a big fan of this kind of like CGI work. I'm curious if this worked for you in this case. I typically don't like realistic looking CGI films because they always screw up one thing and it's the eyes. Mm. They got it right. There's no one in Candy Valley. Holy shit. Like it's possible, guys. It was gorgeous work. It really was gorgeous CGI. Like I was very that was the one thing I said. Like, even if I don't like the story, I'm very impressed with the CGI work. Yeah, yeah. There's to the degree that they will almost blow out some of the light and highlights on people just so you can see little textures in like Tintin's hair when when the sun hit. Dude, like This was a tech piece to show off what they could do with this kind of uh, oh, CGI. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it 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 showcases that if you put the effort where it's needed, uh, then it actually. The, the only other films I can think of that that pull off uh, this kind of effects work, I guess, is the Avatar movies. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, name I, another realistic looking CGI film that has this level of quality. No, honestly, I think um, Love, Death, and Robots was the first thing that I I've seen say, recently where I was like, yeah. "Oh wow, they finally caught up to Tintin." Yeah. yeah, I was. I was gonna say Love, Death, and Robots has always impressed me. Um, well, I was gonna say even some Pixar films though are very very detailed like i i think of the perfect example would be uh brave Mm. and i just think of merida's hair to have that rich wavy curly hair yeah like that and just how detailed it was and how like much body it had just little things like that or like the bear's fur Mm. so i i think there's a few in between but yeah it is very hard to get like a good like cgi <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i think the, the first example of realistic cgi was that final fantasy movie that nobody liked <laughs> oh spirits within yeah yeah, yeah. That one. Mm-hmm. we nobody... did a commentary track on that <laughs> yeah i think we've almost fell asleep watching yeah, it <laughs> I, that was actually the very a side note uh so jesse and i did the commentary track for that and that was the very first thing i ever recorded for montrose or slash jaguar sharks it was the very first thing ever 
Um, Sorry. And then uh, the second thing would be a film rescue episode, but it was like it's it was just funny that my intro was a commentary track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All we had to comment on was like, man, this is really boring, isn't it? I know. <laughs> How do you screw this up? <laughs> oh. it's okay. They came back around with Advent Children and they made it better. Oh, God. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Come yeah. yeah. on my way to. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's getting re released. That's right. Well, also, Mike wants to do a game rescue for Crisis Core. So I got to play that Final Fantasy game now. Oh, boy. <laughs> he said it's short. I'm okay with that. <laughs> It might be the shortest Final Fantasy thing I can think yeah, of. Yeah, Final Fantasy are typically long as shit. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Jesse, what's really working for you in Tin Tin? Like, what, what really? Beyond, so we we've covered, um, you know, the excellent CGI. What's really functional for you? <laughs> uh, what works for me? Um, hey, guys, ever seen that movie Raiders of a Lost Ark? It's a really good movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see it again in CGI. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's, it's it's just an Indiana Jones movie. Like it, it just to the point where it follows the almost the exact same beats. Like remember the the tuck tuck chase that's in the new Indiana Jones that yeah. that goddamn long ass fucking sequence that goes on way too goddamn long. They did the exact same thing here and it's half the length and it looks better. <laughs> Leave your audience wanting more, god damn it. Stop putting too much shit in your movies i'm looking at you extraction too why do you have a 20 minute long take in your movie what a knock yeah. <laughs> i've never seen any of the extraction films i don't really have any interest um oh god but yeah, don't. Like, it's it's ridiculous it's um, pure ridiculousness i'm good i'm good uh but yeah like the the uh the motorcycle chase oh, trying yeah. to get the the uh the paper and uh they're going down the uh the mountain and it, the, then the the flood rushes down and it's like the buildings falling because the tank got it went underneath it. It's like all this stuff. It's ridiculous. And it's completely unrealistic physically like physics. Who gives a shit? But same thing with Indiana Jones physics. Who gives a shit? Right. right. Like, well, and they get one extra level of excusion here because it is still technically a cartoon, right? It's like it's very realistic. Right. Yeah. But when they it's need to just be... removed enough from reality. If you check the frames on this movie, they get real rubbery at different points just to make some of these things happen the correct way. I, I noticed um the captain's knee at one point turns from a, a joint into just like a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what yeah. functionally is needed for his knee to do in that scene. And it's just for a couple frames, but it's so funny. Like, these people turn into straight-up cartoons in the action sequences. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, it's, But you can't get away with it because it, the original material is a comic. You know, it's more childlike. It's it, I Some of those things I was like, I can forgive that because of what the original material is, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes me think... Because if you had done this live action, this would never be as good. No. Right. This, this would never work. It makes me think of, hey, what would have happened if the MCU was all CGI movies? Mm. How much would we forgive? Yeah. Interesting. I would forgive mountains of shit in Doctor Strange 2 if it was all CGI. Well, and like, just imagine how much easier that job is when you're building the entire frame and not locked into what the camera grabbed. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. That a big advantage to this style is like you could have these extended Rube Goldberg, Wallace and Gromit action sequences. <laughs> I love it's it. It's very absurd. It's yeah. very absurd. That's what makes it good. Yeah. Well, and like by the 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 scene you're mentioning here specifically, by the time he actually snatches anything from the hawk, your heart's pounding, dude. You're like, he's oh, yeah. had seventeen like like tries to grabs through that and just hasn't got anything. It just, you can't push live action that far. You have like a three, like a three rule because yeah, you, yeah. you got to highlight things for reality. And this says, no, 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 this is not reality. Just this kid's going to be grabbing for that scroll for the next three miles. And he's not going to grab it. I mean, it, it works completely works. Yeah. What about you? Hope what worked for you? I I would say I love the <coughs> fact that they had an absolute belligerent drunk. 
yeah. Played yeah, yeah, by yeah. Andy Serkis. The the cast on this is amazing. Oh, yeah, the cast is phenomenal. You had Daniel Craig, you had Andy Serkis, you had the, the writing crew, like uh, uh, Jamie Bell was Tintin. You know, Peter Jackson uh, produced this. How'd you get all these people in the same yeah, room at the same time? It, it was crazy. Uh, but I, I think what I loved is the the pure realism. You know, you have this adventure boy, and quite honestly, half the what he gets done is by pure dumb luck. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's not that he's like some smart genius. He just he's just very optimistic and adventurous, and he just happens to fall like fall into this stuff. You know, it, it's. You know, so I I liked that it's more realistic than like some boy genius or something. I liked that the captain was a belligerent drunk because it shows he was depressed. I I like that. I love that it made the cops look fucking dumb as shit. Oh, uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost as, yes, as their and characters. That they were voiced by those two guys made it even better. Thompson and Thompson. Uh, I. I loved the characters in this. Like, I just really loved the characters. Yeah. It, it, it's what worked for me. And, it, and it, again, it's from the realism. Again, they're put into unrealistic situations, but they're still very real. And it made me, like, more drawn to them. And I, I like that. It Even though it's a kid's movie, it didn't, like, talk to down to kids it showed kids real people yeah and i can appreciate that it made me it made me think of a another steven spielberg thing steven still made me think of my childhood animaniacs steven yeah. spielberg oh yeah you know yep. uh, another thing for kids but it didn't talk down to kids and i loved that about him he did freakazoid he did animaniacs like he did all those and i've always very much appreciated what he does you know because of that i've always loved that always 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 so like when it comes to spielberg's animation department and everything i've been a fan since childhood so he gets you early yes (laughs) yeah i'm I'm, a a big fan of his ability to make my even minor characters great like i i because I, I, I agree with you hope like all the characters in this really really stand out and it goes back to something i think i've said on the show before <coughs> um, you don't know the actor's name you don't even know his name in the movie but in raiders of the lost ark you remember the guy that says it's being worked on by top men top oh yeah right that guy, right. that yeah. guy, that's a Spielberg like flourish that you go, oh yeah, this extra in this movie who has a line and you you just can't get the line read out of your head because he knows how to make these really, really impactful characters out of just nothing. Like, like Thompson and Thompson are bumbling idiots. That's it. There's nothing oh, yeah. else behind them, but they, yeah. there's still an, an element added to them that when they're nice to Tintin, it kind of rounds them out a little bit. And when they're, when they show up in disguise in another country to like save the day with the wallet because of like, th- 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 this movie has yes. like C, D, E, and F stories happening in it. <laughs> Also, the pickpocket gets a whole character. Like, why does he keep doing this? He's a kleptomaniac. He can't right. help himself. He's just got and a whole office that, full of wallets. And the <laughs> fact that he is just like, the, 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 that whole scene where he's like, oh, you know, he, he must be a clo- he He hates the outside. Well, no wonder he puts all of his wallets in his living room, you know? <laughs> like, they just and, don't get it. And the fact that like their idiocy is what made him turn him in <laughs> just cracked me up. Right. Like they I can't take this up. anymore. Just take me in. <laughs> but like, isn't that like? Anyways, yeah, I could talk about how bad cops are at their job all day. Um, <laughs> it's not get political. Not this one. This right. is a fun episode. No, yeah, this is a fun one. Um, and a globe trotter. I think that that's what really stood out to me this time. I don't. It's not that I missed it on on my first watch, but I didn't realize how much of a globe trotter this was, and and just yes. the locations that they take you to. Um, you know what I got the feeling of? I got the what? feeling that Spielberg watched 
the Uncharted 3 trailer and said, Nah, I could fucking do that in my sleep. This is what the kids like now? Yeah, 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 I could do this in my sleep. Because nah. there are so many scenes that are just shot for shot, like, oh, dude, okay, you're just doing Uncharted. Hell yeah. Like, I'm not mad. This is not a complaint. But, like, oh, yeah, you're right. God damn, you're right. Plane crash into the desert. That was yep. the, the whole trailer Straight for Uncharted up. 3 for a minute. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, going to like you know f- uh, fantastic locations, and I I love when they go to is it Budapest or it's not Budapest at the end. Um, no, it was I forget where, but oh it was God, like Middle else? Eastern area, like uh, Bagar in Morocco. Bagar, Bagar. is that a real yeah. place? I feel like that's a made up location. I, I, a bunch of these are. Yeah, I don't I don't think. Yeah, the, I thought um, so. It, but it, it, it's supposed to take place in like. Middle East Africa is oh, yeah. fictitious, fictitious Moroccan port of Bagar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like that location. You've seen Spielberg shoot these kind of locations, but now he gets to build them. And what does he do? Yeah. He makes it vertical instead of horizontal so that we can have this avalanche yeah. chase there. It's so fun to see him fire on these cylinders where it's like yeah this set design wouldn't really make sense in a real movie right like yeah can you imagine building the wallet room for a throwaway gag in a live action oh jesus movie? christ God, no but you can just copy paste these wallets in it if you're doing cgi and suddenly bits yeah. that that like take a lot don't take a lot and i i yeah oh, it's so inventive in that way I was kind of surprised there was no nods to Indiana Jones at any point in the whole movie. There was no, like, you'd never see anybody in the background wearing his hats, or you never see, like, Indiana Jones, like, pass by or something like that. Maybe it's I a rights it's be- issues thing. Well, I think it's also because he was trying to pay homage to actual Tintin. Because Tintin's True. been around decades. Longer than Indiana Jones. Decades yeah. before yeah. Indiana Jones. So, like, he wanted to do true respect to it. And, like, its adventures. Like, why would he mess that up you know especially yeah, if that was like part of his childhood yeah it was weird when the credits start typically spielberg movies end with directed by steven spielberg this starts with unit production manager which is odd to me i'm well, guessing he, he gets I, I don't know how much credit in the opening sequence to like this and this movie has a animated opening sequence which you don't see very yeah. often anymore yeah 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 so, but I think it's also because he was off working on, was it War Horse at the time? Yeah. So he did two movies in a, in a single year. And for films like this, animated films, director is not as important as you really think. Mm. It, it, it's more the CGI artists, the people that are in charge of the CGI department. They're the ones that are more important. Uh, animated films, the director can kind of step in, kind of say like, do this, do that. And then they can kind of leave. Then just leave it to the animators to do that stuff and then the director just kind of says yes or no and that's and if if they're doing it well the animators are coming up with the the physical performance and the director's job is to guide the actors to match that so that yeah there's a there's a palpable feeling of the actors going through these motions in this case there's almost entirely um performance capture um so there's a lot of real probably directed all of that yeah yeah exactly yeah I mean, he's he's done it before. He did um, he uh, what the hell? He's directed video games before. He's directed uh, other animated productions before. So he's he knows how to do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it, it's it's not outside of his wheelhouse. And then he went off and did the hell was that movie? Oh, Ready Player One, which we'll all try to forget ever happened. What happened to the beautiful <sighs> Spielberg? Oh God, why does that movie look like? dog shit so the the final indiana jones connection i want to bring up um do you want to know how spielberg found out about tintin oh how how it was making raiders of the lost ark are you serious all the reviews accused him of copying tintin and he was like oh my i don't know what that is so he got into tintin after he made raiders of the lost ark wow that's funny Oh wow, that that's actually really Damn. funny. <laughs> art imitating art imitating art. Listen, oh, that's yeah, great. great minds, right? Like, and and that's to, I don't think it's it's it's, it's, it's not like a a miracle. <sighs> that kind of content was the major content. Like pre cowboy movies, there was a lot of King Solomon's Mines, Tarzan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice yeah. Burrows, like adventure was the the thing to do in the late eighteen and nineteen hundreds if you were white and had money. 
You know I what I mean? Like say, that was the like, thing to do. Robin Hood and like all yeah. that. It's it's okay. Mark Twain. So many of his books are are riffs on the adventure genre in America. You know, like yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. I don't want this genre to die. I love the globe trotting adventure, getting shot at. Like Tintin has a gun and never uses it really in the movie. Uh, he yeah. uses it, but he doesn't shoot anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the yeah. movie makes such like lines that. Yeah, this is a kids' movie, but there's real guns in it, and this guy's gonna get shot on their door, and then they're gonna make a joke about it because obviously this has happened before. Yeah, well, it, it, that's what also I want to point out is that it, this is mainly a, a children's film because yeah. there's there are guns, there's people getting shot well, at. But, never but, see them. But, so when like they the don't first... get shot on screen. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say no, you, you never no see blood. the blood or the actual hitting of like it's all yeah. yeah more so implied. Yeah, even when uh when the during the flashback segment when when um was it Red Rackham I think is his name yep. uh, he gets he gets stabbed on the boat and he pulls his sword away there is no blood nothing. on the yeah, yeah, yeah nothing even though there's a little cut right here on his side no blood because children's film we're trying to just make it for for a younger audience if if it's it was secretly if, all lightsabers <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get your kids into watching these kinds of movies this is like this is a perfect starting point for like oh a god yeah. Yeah, this five or ten years old. Yeah, this is perfect for them. This then go to Raiders of a Lost Ark. Oh yeah, yeah. I would not give that to a five year old. Those last no. ten minutes scarred me as a child. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome when we saw it as kids, but yeah, now I'm like, eh, yeah, let let the kids watch Tintin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. This is going to be a rolling theme for me across to whatever's this season. Is I, I'm highlighting kids movies that aren't really kids movies in that. I think there are movies that are made for kids that talk down to kids that are like, this is an yeah. adult speaking to a child. Yes. That's your like your trolls movies. If there's a lesson of the week hidden inside your movie, you don't really respect the kids enough to pull it out of the story. Whereas a tin yeah. man is brave enough to go, no, actually this drunk guy is going to sit Tintin down and go, don't lose hope. Uh, don't talk shitty about yourself. Like he says these things directly to Tintin. Yeah. Because we, the kids understand Tintin is them. Like that that is their POV character into this adventure and story. And now they get to see this adult world from a kid's point of view. And I really, I really appreciate that in a kid's movie that's not here to just like, can, can I talk about Avatar, The Last Airbender for like two seconds? Oh, um, the, the live action yeah. uh, that show that's on the way. Okay, I will make that thing is already a dumpster fire, and it's not even out yet. Wait, wait. Can, can I can I ask real quick? Is it about there is no war? No, no. Um, although that is so poignant in today's world, right? Um, no, in, in particular, an issue that I'm seeing with the new. I, I will make no comment on the new series. It's probably going to be ass the original creators abandoned ship like months ago, it's probably going to be ass. Um, yeah. To make sure the production that, company. Yeah. Right. A, an issue. Is that it the seen, Game of Thrones people that are in charge of it? That's, that's what I want to touch on. That is becoming an issue for people because they've said that they're dropping certain elements of the show. And, yeah. and I, I have to raise my hand and ask like, why are people mad about this? Not, not in that, like, they might ruin it because they might, but like, I guess I'm starting to understand some people really wanted it to be a one-to-one -one adaptation. They wanted live action episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender where they teach you a lesson at the end of the episode, like in the kids show. And they're adapting this for what is now an adult audience seeking it out on streaming apps. So it's being adultified. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that because yeah. Tintin is proof that, yeah, you don't right. need to do, uh, you, you know, uh, lesson of the week kind of stuff to make something poignant that kids can still watch. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm concerned in people that are like, they want that lesson of the week out of their adult content. And it just, it doesn't match to me. Like, imagine if Reacher sat like, at the end of each episode and was like, hey, kids, being a drug dealer is a bad thing. And maybe we should, you know, like, it would be like, so it, it, it weird it, it come it, i think it's something that's kind of happened with america these days which is that I, can't remember, I think it was jim norton who's a comedian i typically don't care for but he did say in recent interviews says we're a nation of babies well like, that, that's what i was 
um, asking Seth about earlier because it was just revealed about Avatar: Last Airbender, the the live action that is, um, that they're they're reporting already for season two that they're going to exclude the whole war of bossing say and like judy is that like the crux of the season and uh, well what i'm saying is obviously they're gonna do like the war against ozai and things like whatever but like the the whole part of season two was that the main earth kingdom of bossing say like the central point was like everyone was so like like kind of brainwashed into thinking like there's no war in bossing say it's just pure yeah. yeah like we're just it is pure we're you know and they were like trying to fight against that saying hey guys no once you go outside the outer rim there's the fucking whole world out there at war for the past hundred years. And they're actually getting rid of that whole story arc because it's too much for people to handle, apparently. And I'm like, that's talking down to people. Like, that's yeah. that's basic propaganda. And yeah. Yeah. you can teach kids that propaganda is bad and that was a good way to show it and they're just like oh nope we don't want to we don't want to harm the kids i'm like it didn't harm the kids back then how's it gonna harm them now Uh, also i i i want to shout this from the rooftops there is no child demanding a remake to avatar the last airbender this is being made for adults like yeah straight up right (laughs) It's like the same people that argue that no, like like when did Star Wars get political? Like that that fucking crowd. Yeah. They just want the same feeling they had when they were ten years old and they saw it's it. It's always been then. political. <laughs> yeah, it's like guys, you're thirty five fucking years old. You don't need a story of the week or a lesson of the week. You're a goddamn adult that pays taxes. Shut right. up. Go watch you you do that. Your shit together by this point. There's no hope for you. Yeah. Christ, man, and like. And also, I it, to, to also bring that point home of like showing graphic content to children, I would absolutely take a ten year old and show them graphic war footage and be like, "Yeah, this is why war is bad. Don't ever endorse this." Right. right? It's okay for kids to see graphic content if you're making the point of this is bad. Well, especially if that's you know, something don't ever do out. this. You know what I mean? Like some some kids might be a little more like violence averse, and I understand not showing them. But some kids are like, I want to see that, and at that point, it's like, yeah, Saving Private Ryan might be a safe little ten minute opener for you to watch real quick and see how scary this shit is. You know, it's we watched that shit in in school. Like, yeah, yeah, like this is what it felt like to be at that landing in Normandy. Like, I remember it, in yeah. school, I did um, a PowerPoint presentation about Emmett Till. And holy shit! Um, and I, I that was my whole report. I did the research and everything, and I had the photos of his body after they found him. And my um, U.S. history teacher, he was like, "Everyone's gonna sit in this class and watch this," because he already saw, like, because he he vetted my presentation beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "You're gonna sit here and watch this." If it gets too much, you can leave after, but you will sit and see the it initially. Oof. He's like, you can leave after, but you will learn. And I liked that. He was like, yeah. if it's too much, you can leave after, but you will see the horrors of our history. And I was and I respected that. Cause he wasn't gonna like sit you there and force you to be there, but he's like, No, you will see what we did, and we're horrible people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. And and I agree with that. I feel like everyone should sit down and say, hey, yes, this is horrible, but not like make you force it, but just be like, yes, open your eyes. This is real. Maybe you can come back to it later. Mm. You know, and that's, I feel like that's what Tintin did. You know, they said, oh, this is the horrors of being a drunk. Yeah. He can overcome it. This is the horrors of, you know, lack of, police investigation this is the horrors of international whatever you know but it was like it gave you hints of it and didn't overwhelm you with it and that's what it was like hey 
yeah. you know, it, it did it gradually. And that's what I appreciate about it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, do, it doesn't lay it on too thick. It's, it's for a younger audience. I'm, <laughs> you guys ever seen that meme of, uh, uh, Zack Snyder's Spider-Man can't hurt you and it's just him with a machine gun. <laughs> I'm thinking of that. Like, what would Zack Snyder's Tin Tin be like? It'd be a oh, fucking god. nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. I can, tell you, I can tell you this horrible nightmare. The, the action no. sequences wouldn't have the uh, the absolute chemistry that they do here. The, no. The, the, the tumbleweed of, like, logic and physics. That's one of my favorite parts of um, the pirate sequence specifically. Um, first of all, Steven Spielberg can do Pirates of the Caribbean in his sleep. So oh, yeah, he yeah. just stuck. Why with did he never movie? direct Pirates? He would have dude, been better than Gore Verbinski. Look, you already, you want to know why? Why? Um, Goonies. Oh yeah, he kind of did already do it. Because <laughs> Goonies. <laughs> Listen. The- well, I mean, he didn't do it himself. I mean, it was Richard Donner, but he was there on set as a producer. Yes. But, yeah, he kind of already did it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, listen, Still waiting on that sequel. <laughs> <laughs> more, more power to him. Yeah, I just he, he could do this kind of stuff in his sleep, and I, I really respect that. It just truly, yeah. and, and even that something that didn't dawn on me the the first time I watched it that entire pirate sequence is because he's becoming sober and having hallucinations <laughs> while he sobers up in the desert from dehydration. <laughs> Because, oh God, folks! If you're if you're watching, when you sober up, you dehydrate so fucking bad. And if you're already in a desert, you will trip balls. So this isn't just a flashback for flashback's sake. It is lit. The movie is excusing its existence by saying, "No, yeah, this man's hallucinating in the desert." And then later on, they double down and they do that cut back and forth thing where he's literally like living out ancestral DNA or something and doing the fight sequence. Yes. And it cuts to Tintin. Oh, and he's like no. under the table. He's terrified. <laughs> he's going to kill me. I just oh, no. <laughs> real, real quick though. I, I loved the part where um, he was like, what is this delicious beverage? There's, I don't smell any bouquet to it. And it's like, it's, it's water. What? Well, this is magnificent <laughs> it's just drinking water oh man yeah the dog swaps it. see the dog's the real detective in the oh, movie oh yeah yes. yeah I, I, yeah that's I, what I was... i'm saying like tintin's a, kind of a bumbling idiot but he has like a heart of gold it's it's all about snowy yeah yeah it's 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 uh it's uh um sherlock holmes and dr watson watson's typically the one that's sort of lends the clues so that Sherlock can figure everything out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need that, like, that eye of normalcy for your weirdo to kind of, like, lens through. You know what I mean? Yeah. I Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, Yeah, I kind of want to go back to your bossing say thing there, Hope. Oh, Um, go for it. (laughs) I'm going to pontificate for a second. This is all hypothetical. I'm just wondering if they decided to cut the propaganda section after an extended sequence in real life America of us talking about how much propaganda is coming out of different conflicts around the world and how maybe, yep. how maybe America is very pro propaganda if it's benefiting yep. them. Yeah. And I'm just really curious if maybe there was a big old Z word that was going to get slung at them uh, for doing that incorrectly. Um, what's the what's the word? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say it on this podcast. I don't want to get say us it. canceled. Absolutely. Is... I just there's some Zionist shit happening around this. Is yeah, all I'm going to say. There you go. There, there that's, you go. That's some weird, uh, weird. Can we do that shit in America with the kids. Like Pledge of Allegiance is the is is propaganda. Oh, oh, do it young with dog. kids. Don't get me started on bringing cops into schools to talk about their job, but then the cops oh, won't talk about how 50% of them beat their wives and they only solve 2% of the crimes. Yeah, that's real propaganda for the kids right there. Dude. Trust yeah. this man, kids. Bro, as many times as I've like ta- went to clients and I'm like, uh, the cops said this was an OD, right? Yeah. Why is there five bullet holes in four different walls? <laughs> Um, 
spot. They just I've seen pump <laughs> bullets don't just miss people unless it's jewels. Yeah. Right. Like uh They just don't want to do paperwork. Jesus Christ. Gee, why? Yikes. All right, back to Tin Tin. Um Back to Tin Tin. Back to the good stuff. Back to happy things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. I had to pontificate there for a second. Um I, I, let's let's gather our three reasons for people to to watch this one. I want to start doing this on this season where okay. like, this right. show exists. Uh, we've spoiled a little. Obviously, we've not spoiled a lot. Uh, I want to leave the, the story kind of where it is for for y'all to watch. Um, reasons for entry. Why why would we recommend somebody watch this one? Um, I, I'm trying to get it in list con- context so we can put it on TikTok. So here's three reasons to watch Tintin. My reason is. Uh, I'm going to steal from Jesse. This is an Indiana Jones movie, and it's the one we God deserve, damn it. baby. It is the one we deserve, baby. <laughs> it's the apology for Crystal Skull. It's the apology for Crystal Skull. Sorry, I screwed up. There you go. Have this. It's all yours. Uh, it, it's got the comedy. It's got the action. It's got the, it's got the characters. It's got the beats and the mystery. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's another reason for entry? Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's the, it's peak CGI. It really doesn't get better than this. I would actually argue these are better than the Avatar movies because the Avatar movies, they just feel so fake all the time. These, they've got a sheen to them. There's like a, there's a, they're too to clean. Them. They're yeah. too Blue clean. Avatar movies, by the way, blue Avatar. <laughs> the, 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 the space Smurf one, that, that one that apparently there's going to be like seven of them. Like, shut up, Jim Cameron, just make a video game. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but yeah, these this is peak CGI. Like this is you can anybody could watch this and be entertained. Absolutely. It's not it's not like those fucking minions movies that talk down to kids and they're fucking irritating and drive parents crazy. <laughs> they all end on family is excellent and you should trust your family. And it's like, dog, not all families are like that. No, no. Uh, hey, I like oh. the original Despicable Me. Thank you. Uh, hard to top. Yeah, yeah. Before they got obnoxious. Yeah. Before I was gonna they say, got obnoxious. And also the um, like Minions World and Universal is fantastic. Not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> um, but another reason for to watch Tintin, I'm straight up going to say Edgar Wright and crew. Right? Yeah. Edgar Wright uh, and his crew, like Nick Frost, Simon Pegg, like all of them came back. And I love mm-hmm. that. I love that they're working together again. I love it. Yeah. yeah. This is hot off the heels of Scott Pilgrim. Um, yep. So this is a man that is thinking about how to make cartoons into real life. Yes. Spielberg yes, yes, yes. and Peter Jackson, both off of huge movies. Uh, Peter Jackson has just finished up the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy at this point. Uh, I think he's working uh, on King Kong. He just finished King Kong. King Kong. There you go. Yeah. Um, and like they're walking into this giant thing and they go, who do we hire to help us adapt? Edgar Wright, the kid that likes cartoons, bring that motherfucker in and just delivers that screenplay is tight. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think yep. this is around the time that Spielberg and um, uh, Jackson were talking about doing Halo. Yeah, They were like, they were going to partner up on Halo at some point and then that all fell through and well, then that's they manifested into the show we have now. <laughs> oh, don't watch it. Don't watch it. It's, it's so not worth it. It's so not worth yeah, it. I I think- just watch the funny memes on TikTok of everyone complaining about he never puts his helmet on. That's the only thing that's entertaining. Yeah. Just shit, just shit talk in the show. That's yeah. it. I like that actor too. That's what really pisses me off. He's a great actor and he just tests. He has to defend the show because he's in the show. He clearly is just like gritting through his teeth. Like, why am I not wearing the helmet? Yeah. You can tell he's just, he, it's it's like somebody off screen of like, yes, yes. Say it's good. Say it's good. And there's a gun to his head off screen. It's like, you ever seen those TikTok memes where it's like the people that repost and it's like, they add in another thing to the side of the the image. Yeah. Yeah, It's like, that's literally what it is. He's being held captive because of that fucking contract. Absolutely. No, hard to not disagree with that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, There's there's apparently been a sequel that's been greenlit. It's, but it's been in development hell for years and years. And I really don't think you're going to get a sequel to this. To Tintin, mm. yeah, and honestly, like it's too long. They've waited. Yeah. Everybody, all these people are off in separate directions at this, at this point. Good luck. I mean, not that all these people had to be in the same room at the same time. Like, I really doubt that Edgar Wright and Spielberg and and Jackson and Joe Cornish were and, and Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. I doubt they were all in the same place at the same time. Now that we can just 
oh, just sure. email shit and it, it, it's just or just do video calls just, we don't need to be in the same place at the same time i just don't think uh, too like you said too much time has passed um the the gateway to a sequel yeah. uh, unless it's like something iconic like when they did anchorman 2 the 10 years later thing you know like yeah. it has to be something like crazy big like a draw to do something so much later yeah yeah. and i just don't think as as great as it is i just don't think it had that pull so also adventure films are kind of a dying genre now like the uncharted movie that came out a few years ago like nobody liked it and then indiana jones 5 that was like the final nail in the coffin like audiences just don't want this anymore no weird they do it's just they're being made <laughs> shitty <laughs> yeah oh, i have another reason uh reason or they're in game me. form they're in video game form that's video game are. adventures is, is the better way to go like uncharted or, we saw yeah i was i was gonna say some of the things i love adventure wise it is anime series mm-hmm. yeah and that's where i get my adventure from it was anime series listen one yeah. piece has been killing it for me i'm up in the 800s now Mm. and it's going strong um i had i have one more reason for entry and i'm so mad i forgot it earlier what is it uh okay i i I love your point here jesse you're highlighting how adventure movies tend to end really shitty right like like as good as any adventure movie can be it is only as good as your ending and the last two indiana jones have been like yeah, not, not so good. Not good finale. Flying saucer takes off, and then Nazis are shooting at Roman soldiers. This, this is how we're. Fuck off. Yeah, just whatever. So, Anywho, I love that Tintin anyway. decides. No, there's no, there's no, there's no ghost goblins. There's nothing, you know, over the top. No sci-fi. We will, however, end on a mech crane battle for our final. Oh, awesome. Sequence. <laughs> Again, if you did this live action, that would not be entertaining because that doesn't work that way. They bend the rules of physics just enough. Just enough to make crane fighting work. Because again, it's 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 forgivable because it's originally a comic, because it's animated. You you can give way to this because like I was I wasn't thinking, oh, that's improbable. I was like, no, this is a fun cartoon, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's straight up Saturday morning cartoons at that point. It yeah. felt like a tick, you know what I mean? Like straight up. Oh, my just, God. <laughs> just as over the time. They just put the full series of the tick on Hulu for anybody that's interested. Oh, I love um, the tick. Oh, the Patrick Warburton show? No, no, the, the original 90s cartoon. Oh, the oh, '90s cartoon. They put oh, whole shit. Thing on Hulu. I've wow. been have I've had it on the background oh, like all week. Dog. I know it's gonna be my show now. <laughs> I forgot how like amazing. I don't, I don't think kids have ADHD. I think cartoons rewired our brain. Rewatch the Tick, y'all. That mo- that show is ADHD as fuck. Like it cannot decide what is happening in any given. It is excellent. I'm not not a knock on it, but like a little all over the place. That and Freakazoid were the two uh, ADHD shows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love yeah. them. Um, damn! Thank you, thank you guys for talking about Tintin with me. I, I, I hope we get a sequel. Peter Jackson's been talking about it with Jamie Bell. I think as recently as two years ago. But like, I don't know if Jackson's good luck getting these the people in the same anymore. place at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Also, Peter Jackson. People forget he hasn't directed like a, a narrative film since the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah, he's done two. He did two documentaries. That's it. He's done nothing else. Yeah, I think I, the Hobbit trilogy kind of like beat the living fuck out of him <laughs> well like having to shill for warner brothers breaking unions i was like i think he kind of said yeah i think i'm done for a little while guys Ugh. yeah no since 2018 he's not yeah directed wow he's living off those royalties from lord of the rings <laughs> he appeared what? in the muppet show that's right he appeared in the the muppets where that little cameo that he had that's right uh, where he I, said i don't, I don't I... direct movies i direct trilogies <laughs> I don't know why I thought he directed the Mortal Engines movie. He was just a producer. He was just yeah, a producer. I was about to say, yeah, yeah. Cuz that movie's It's all good, guys. Too. We'll totally get a trilogy. We got Peter Jackson. Yeah, sure. How'd that work out, guys? Right. Jesus. Yikes. Yikes. Right. Maybe they should have gone full CGI instead of Right. people would've, on CGI environment. That would have right. really helped forgive a lot of the dumb bullshit in that right. sto- in that story. God. 
Well, this has been uh, just quite a trip down Adventure Lane for me. I really appreciate it. I think uh, yeah. our next pick is a Jesse pick, if I remember correctly. Ooh, it, what's going to be next recording? What are we? Which one are we doing? I've, I've forgotten what I picked. Did let I pick me pull anything? up the calendar here real quick. Oh, we got Barry. That's our next two. Oh, yeah, efforts. that's right. We're talking about Barry. I finally blew through <sighs> all Barry in the span of a week, and we've been pushing it down the road to get to it. So, yeah. I'm glad that Barry. it's going to be included in this season. Yes. Uh, talk about it fresh. Yeah. Well, it's also very short. It's four seasons, and it's it's only 10 episodes a season, mm-hmm. and every episode is half an hour. Yeah. So it's really not that much. Yeah. Which makes me very happy. Like, I bring back the half hour show. Like, I just, just burn through seasons. Quickly. Bring back ending shows when they're supposed to end. <laughs> Yeah, stop drawing it out. Four seasons. Perfect. Perfect. That ending was and perfect. Yet, Jesse still won't watch anime. I'm working on Chainsaw Man. I'm still up to episode <laughs> seven. I'm up to episode seven. They just got out of the hotel. I, I, uh, I just watch oh. I just watch fifty hours of a Barry show, but I, I I can't do more than two episodes of anime, even though it's twenty five minutes. <laughs> That was awesome when he killed every face in that hallway and in that elevator shaft and ate all the blood so he could keep going for like three days straight. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, dude, that shows. Oh. So there's cool. a, there's another thing that if they they should they could never do live action like any like anime really should just stay anime. I have like, some bad news for you, Jesse. You're fucking. Kidding as me. soon as a anime does as well as Chainsaw Man, it gets lined up for a live action. That's there just are, there are some that are good though. Um, live action Assassination Classroom, great. Ooh, uh, um, the Parasite the Maxim movies directed by the guy oh that God, did Godzilla yes. minus one. Yes. Uh, oh no shit! He yes. Two, yes. two anime uh, live action remakes. Yeah. Wow, I fair. love Parasite. It's so good. Yeah, if you if you want to skip that anime, Jesse, and just watch those two movies, I would not blame you. Uh, you would get a, probably a pretty good experience out of it. Oh, oh good. Okay. My only experience with live action anime is uh, all the American uh, ones. Yeah. What, what is it? The what was the one? Uh, oh, Death Note. That. Yeah, awful. that was the American one. We don't watch that one. There is a Japanese yeah. version one though that is actually fairly decent, but. The American ones we don't we don't we don't talk about, which is so sad because we did get. Uh, do you guys see that they're adding casting as a uh, Oscar? Yeah, but not stunts, you cocksuckers! Jesus, what, what the? So uh, Willem Dafoe as um, the Shinigami in Death Note, the American one, that deserves an Oscar for casting. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, that it's perfect. It, the movie doesn't deserve the Oscar. No, but the no. casting does. Yep. Still well, I'm not sorry, giving Will- anything to stuff. Willem Dafoe in anything deserves an Oscar, but whatever. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. He just shows up in the boy in the heron as a as a pelican and then talks to Robert Pattinson to give us that lighthouse reunion just for a split <laughs> second. Mm. Did they know they were gonna be talking to each other in that, or is that or did uh No, uh, so the way Ghibli does their voice acting, you don't know who any of the other cast is. And here's how I know. Robert Pattinson is doing his best Mark Hamill in that movie, and then Mark Hamill's in the movie. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Um, Anyways, that's a lot to check out. Uh, Tintin, Avatar movies, Fast and Furious, Avatar The Last Airbender. (laughs) Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. What else did we get into today? All Boy the, and the Heron. Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh, I think that's going to do it for this to whatever's way up. Thank you all so much for being here. <gasps> Good night. Good night. Bye.